Northern Ireland voted to remain. I will give way. Very grateful. Could the Honourable Lady please help us with this? Is she right in saying that members of the European Parliament would sit in this national convention? Does that include Mr Nigel Farage? <laughs> I thank uh, the Honourable Lady for giving way. And what I would say, Oil uh, quoted uh, paragraph 151 of the Supreme Court's judgment, and I very much suggest to the Honourable Members opposite that they read the judgment yep. rather than uh, take from it what they would like it to say. Because what it said is the Sewell Convention has an important role in facilitating harmonious relationships between the UK Parliament and the devolved legislatures. But the policing so of its is. scope and the manner of its operation does not lie within the constitutional remit of the judiciary. No, I, I, I'm not going to give way. I'm going to keep going. And uh, I'm going to. Oh, order, order. Can I? No, the honourable lady just have to take a seat for a moment. I've been very kind by bringing the SNP in. Please don't take advantage of the time that I wanted to split. Oh, 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 order, order. I wanted to show. Sorry, I wanted to show the time. I'm hoping the Honourable Lady is coming to an end just to get one more speaker in, which I promised I would do by allowing you to speak. Let me hear. Uh, my point is this, that uh, the purpose of this amendment is to do what the government said they were going to do when they uh, brought the Scotland uh, Bill forward, to make, Scot to make uh, the Scottish Parliament the most powerful devolved parliament in the world and to give it a say in this process which will fundamentally affect the rights of, British citi of Scottish citizens and Scottish business. And uh, I, I note that honourable members opposite uh, were given as much time as they wanted to make their Absolutely. points, and I intend to take enough. as much time as is my right to make my point. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Honourable Lady has come to an end. Can we have the Minister, please? Thank you, Mr Hoyer. Mr Salmon, you shall know better. Order. 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 One second. A point of order, Mr Salmon. It's quite clear that the Honourable Lady had not resumed her seat, sir. Being in the chair accords you many privileges, but you cannot reinterpret the wishes of an Honourable Member who is on her feet. Mr Salmon, as the Chair, I have the right to make decisions on this House. Just a moment. What well, I would say is, quite rightly, I wanted to bring the Honourable Lady in, which I did. When the SNP whip comes and gives me an ask for me to give a couple of minutes to ensure that you've got another voice, which I did, I certainly don't expect advantages to be taken of the Chair on the agreement that I made. Oh, Mr. Wishart, calm down. It's a very serious matter. It's so serious that I want to hear what the Minister's got to say in, no, in response to where we are. I think it's very serious. I want to hear it. Oh, well, um, this is a hugely important debate. Oh, order! Mr. Sam, can I can you just clarify something for me? Tempers are running quite high. We need to just calm it down. In fairness, I've been very generous in coming into the chair. Mr. Wishart, we don't need any extra help just for the moment. Can I just say? I want to hear, and you would expect to hear, what the Minister got to say in response to the opening speeches, which I believe you would have wanted answers to. Now, the fact is, I believe this House also wants to hear what the Minister's got to say. The last thing I wanted to do was take up the time on points of order, because in the end, we'll not hear what the Minister's got to say. Now, I understand you may have used some unparliamentary language to me. I'm sure that's not the kind of person that you are, and I'm sure you didn't. I'm saying I, I don't know. No, I didn't. I'm saying I'm sure it wasn't the case. That's what I said. I didn't accuse you far from it. No, then. What I want to do is let's get the minister on his feet. Mr. Hoyle, thank you, Mr. Hoyle. And we've heard from all 
four corners of the United Kingdom. Uh, everyone who has spoken in this debate agrees on the importance of engaging closely with the devolved administrations and legislatures as we embark upon the forthcoming negotiations. I have to say, uh, I have great respect for, for you as a chair, but I hope you can understand the frustration that we all feel that only two SNP MPs have been called in this debate, which is important to the future of Scotland and our position within Europe. And I'm asking what you can do to make sure in this debate that the voice of the people of Scotland is held correct, heard correctly. It has not been heard this evening to the extent that it should. Can, can I just say to you, I walked into the chair, I've tried to ensure there was a second voice, which we're listening to. That's what I agreed to, and that's what I've done. In fairness, I think you've done better than was going to happen, and in which case, let's see what the Minister's got to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Hoyle, engaging the devolved administrations and discussing their priorities is exactly what the Joint Ministerial Council on EU negotiations was set up for. It brings together the constituent parts of the United Kingdom to discuss each government's requirements for the future relationship with the EU. And